Why can't we get cross server like in a month? Why, why, why do we have to wait till June for cross server OP? Yeah. <laughs> they just cut it off. They just cut it off right on that guy. Yeah. How's it going, everybody? My name is Archie TV, and let's dive right in to learn more about why crossover OPR cannot be delivered in less than one month. Let's go. <laughs> I don't know why. Why? I mean, I did. I did watch the video. Welcome to Forge in a Turn, where we talk about all things New World. You're going to see some new faces here today. I'm really happy to say that we're here. We have Dave Sullivan, who's our technical director, and Anthony Wynn, who's our senior server, our one of our senior server engineers, but does a lot of heavy lifting on the server team for us. One of the things that, that these guys are probably sick of me asking, but I'm gonna ask it again is, you know, why can't we get cross server like in a month? Why, why, why do we have to wait till June for cross server OPR? <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's a tough one. Um, if, if you think about like the, the classic MMO architecture, which is more like a, like a sharded approach, uh, in New World we call it worlds, but it's really this, effectively the same as shards in a more traditional architecture. You take, uh, You've got a bunch of servers that are stuck together, and that's the shard. And then you've got one for uh, like computing the, the game environment. You've got one for all your database. You've got one for like uh, like player ingress and queuing. Uh, probably one for like chat and social systems. And it's all just kind of glued together. And there's just a certain number of players that that shard can handle. And and I think the reason the MMOs traditionally start with this approach is because it's easy. It's it's known how you scale because it's bounded by the size of that shard. And so with with New World, we have a lot of that baggage as well. So we're we're built natively on AWS, and we have a lot of like shared microservices built on AWS, uh, which is not sharded. So we're kind of ahead of the curve there. But there, a lot of components, especially like game simulation and and associated communication, is is still kind of isolated, and we, we might say siloed one world at a time. And so kind of breaking that that silo barrier is is kind of where, where the challenge comes in. Okay, so. so yeah, so when we were talking about this early, one of the decisions was if you want it faster, we could just not have chat, for instance. That'd be one way to speed it up. Not have chat or not have presence or things that require communication across the different charts. I'm gonna pause it right now to give you guys a summary of what I'm hearing. This is all technical terms that I'm not familiar with, but let me know in the comments, of course, above here, we're right now live on stream, if you guys feel the same way. Would you guys be okay with having an OPR crossover right now and not having the ability to communicate via voice, not having the ability to type to each other, but enjoy in a crossover OPR with a lack of communication? In my opinion, I think that's not a good direction, but it looks like there's a couple people in the chat that are saying yes, 100%. I think that's not a good idea, and I'll explain to you why in a minute. Imagine the people in your, in your party and you go into an OPR, okay? And when you do a solo queue, you get four random players in your party. Those four random players, if they're on another server, cannot chat with you. You can't type to them. Only thing you can do is wave your hand and do emotes. And you can't tell them you're going to Baron. You can't communicate to them saying that you need, uh, you have items for them to go to the storage to pick up a Zephyr cake. Pretty much zero chat from those players. So the people who come in with a five-man team from their server are gonna have, if the chat is available to them, we don't know yet, because they probably are gonna have available chat. At that point, they're on one shard. The definition of what we're talking about as far as sharding. <laughs> this is serious. I just sharded. <laughs> I don't mean sharding, shard. I'm talking about shards. The shard example is one server is talking to each other, each other and they're using a terminology called shard. If there's two servers, let's say it's Olympus and it's uh, Valhalla, there are two different shards on US East. They're not talking to each other. Now, I think they're gonna explain more in depth about it and explain to you why it becomes so goddamn complicated to have not only the talking aspect, we're talking about the achievements, the person has logged in, logged off, the person got a kill, all of that text is included in that shard. And so the more information that they provide, the more complex it gets. And then it gets even more complex if we're talking about having matchmaking and stuff. Let's go ahead and continue learning more about this. So if, if you have 20 players on 20 different shards and they all have to see the same chat message, uh, that chat message has to be sent to all 20 shards. So we're increasing the amount of communication um, that's necessary to communicate the same thing that we currently communicate in isolation on one world. So why is that bad? It's not necessarily bad, it's just a lot more communication. Um, so if you take that to 
the extreme, if New World had 100 worlds or 200 worlds, that single chat message is now being sent to 100 worlds. And as players are, are going cross world and coming back, sometimes it might miss. You might get the chat messages sent to a world, the player's gone, and now it has to send it back. I'm gonna pause it again. How many times have you guys actually played New World right now? How many of you guys actually see lag in your chats? We're talking about where you went to the Winter of, uh, Warrior Festival or you're playing in OPR with a friend or uh, you're somewhere that's very congested in, in, a, in, a, in some space where the person's message keeps coming up over and over and over again. We're talking about they walk by you and they say the same thing over again. And uh, I get a lot of that with area. Okay, so it's still happening on one shard and STT does it too. Okay, yeah, STT is uh, speech to text. And that spams. We're talking about it spams even in wars, guys. And like one message basically gets spammed like a thousand times. And oh, uh, recruiting does that? I don't think recruiting did that to me. But if recruiting does that to you, no, so I'm going to believe that. Uh, that's crazy. I thought area. It's bad in, in wars as well. So the, the, the example is if they're having issues with chat on a single shard, and then they're trying to solve the chat in OPR cross server, I'm hoping they solve they solved that, and then that would also solve the one shard chat issue. But clearly, if this is a brand new team that was hired to handle a cross server, uh, OPR, they're basically making new tech, guys. Uh, and if they create the tech for it, they can probably create the tech for our single shard servers, which will make our chat more effective. So I, I, I do like the direction they're going in. And yes, we would like a cross server OPR now, but they're creating brand new tech. This is something that I don't think uh, AGS has uh, any capacity of knowing. So hopefully these two gentlemen, of course, and their team below them uh, can figure out. So not only did we multiply it by 100 or 200 to go out, we actually potentially double it to come back in. And that also, when you say presence, what you mean is things like, oh, my friend logged on and yeah. I'm getting notified. On, and things online, like offline, what I'm, maybe what I'm doing. Presence, you know, rich presence could have more information in it than just online, offline. Yeah, you, you might say that within like the one world, the one silo, it's really easy to maintain really strict control over your data and your flow uh, within that area. But as soon as you get more distributed, th things get a lot fuzzier and it's a lot harder to to run those in a consistent manner. So you end up with issues of data integrity and data races and like, is, is your is your presence being written from this world or this world? And, and depending on latency and health of these worlds and when one might arrive out of order and is, is your data valid then still or has it gotten corrupted? Like there's, there's a lot of edge cases to think through when you when you go wide like that. And so then we could introduce dupes or other exploits as well then as a part of that? Potentially, yeah. What other, what other factors come into like making it work cross world? The ability to get somebody on to another world wanna, um, and off of their current world and then... Lock. I want to pause that and go back. I want you guys to understand the idea. And so then we could introduce dupes or other... Yeah, so what he said right here is the idea, why would dupes and, and exploits exist in cross-server OPR? The main reason why that I just heard right now, so I can summarize it for you guys, is that if cross-server OPR and it's not solved and I go in with an item, let's say I go in with let's just assume um, a tradable item that I can go and give to a friend. As soon as I go into the cross server OPR and then I come out, if I trade that item right now, right as soon as I get back, the server hasn't connected me yet. I can give this item over to a friend and then the server will update my, my account as I entered cross server OPR. And that creates a duping mechanic where you can constantly dupe an item because it's gonna say you don't have the item now but then it's gonna refresh my account like I entered. And then so like everyone who gets out of the cross server OPR might take 20 seconds for their account to like fully function like it first entered and then give you all the credits and stuff like that. So if you notice that you got the credit a little bit late uh, as far as when you got the kill or something, that's when the example of duping can occur and exploits can occur. And the new, new World is very, very open to the idea that we all as New World players seen so many different versions of exploits and so many different versions of duping. Why is this happening? I have no clue. I'm not a technical, a technical expert on this, but I think that they're playing the safe role of not bringing this out right off the bat and then causing a new exploit and a new dupe. So I appreciate the slowness, but I also want them to do it right. But I don't think it's called slowness. I, I appreciate them to basically make sure it doesn't come out and they do the right amount of testing that required. Their exploits as well then as a part of that? Potentially, yeah. What other, what other factors come into like making it work cross world? The ability to get somebody on to another world um, 
and off of their current world and then log back in. Um, when we design this, that, that sharded approach is you connect to an entry point server and that entry point server connects you to the servers within the shard or within the world to kind of shorten the time it takes to get between servers if you're going to play on another world. Uh, we're having the players stay on that entry point and then having them connect to another world. So that's all new technology that doesn't really exist currently with those entry points. And there's a little bit of a scale question as to how many, how many different worlds can an entry point be connected to? Because it's one entry point with 500 players on it. So how many different worlds could it connect to? Is it 20? Is it 200? We don't know. Yeah, you've like very low level concerns like sockets and bandwidth and, and performance. Once we do this first version for uh, Outpost Rush, that gives us a big head start on arenas and expeditions, right? Yeah, so uh, a, a part of what we're doing with Crossworld is that uh, by allowing so many pl new players to play together from, from like a very mu a much larger population from every world, that means that we can take advantage of rich matchmaking and try to actually balance matches and, mm. you know, maybe it'll be gear score, maybe it'll be some kind of ELO, we, you know, it's to be uh, Yo! But, uh, new world's gonna get ELO? We have a population where we actually want to match people together. So we, we're trying to architect to build rich matchmaking as well. So we're, we're trying to get ahead of, you know, like future modes yeah. through, through matchmaking. Which, yeah, I know players are excited for once, like, like, that's, I think, what is really important is by laying this great foundation, it's going to allow us to expand and grow in a lot of ways that are very that are very obvious, like those other game modes, but also I think it's going to open us up to other ways to spread the world around as well. Yeah, if you look at, if you look at Outpost Rush and Arenas, those are kind of fairly straightforward, simple matchmaking modes. All right, we're, we're not really, we're, Outpost Rush, we're just kind of, pushing a bunch of people together and say, and then organizing the team and say, you're gonna play. When we get to more complex things, like I want to play in this scenario as a tank or as a healer, um, and I only want to match with people who are playing the opposite roles that I want. Oh uh, getting my that type God. of matchmaking. I wanna pause it real quick. Okay, so if you guys don't know what he's talking about, this is some, some simple shit. If you're a gamer, you already know what I'm talking about. But right now, New World gave us a matchmaking mode that allows us to say, I'm a tank, and I want to match with a healer, and I want to match with DPS if I don't have them in my party existing. They want to bring that into OPR, which means you as a player who is now trying to queue for OPR, either we're going to find it ahead of time in our server, or I'm going to say, I'm a DPS, match me with those who are looking for DPS in their party, or... Let's imagine I'm a solo cure, and they put five solo cures who didn't create their own lobby, aka what we're doing right now in, in matchmaking uh, for uh, mutators and normal dungeons, and then put five people together in a party: three DPS, one healer, and one tank. I don't really think I don't really think tanks really have a place right now in OPR, and and uh, three versus three arenas. Uh, the reason for it is because just. There's really nothing to tank. Uh, it, it just doesn't have a place. I think the ident identification of a tank for PvP is uh, really a bruiser at that point. So uh, I think it's just be four DPS and one healer if you're just going to put them as a as a move tool. Um, I hope they don't put tanks as a matchmaking uh, aspect into PvP because you're just throwing at that point whoever that does solo queue. System up and running and, and writing a rules engine that allows the game team to be really creative on how they make matches. That's kind of the legwork that's going on now that will benefit us as we get past the, the first few Crossworld features. Yeah, and I think you mentioned ELO or some more complex yeah, form just, of matchmaking what, for arenas. That's definitely... Whatever, what whatever heuristics design needs to make sure everybody has a good time. Yeah. It's, um, it's exciting. It's, com it's pretty complex. Um, hopefully, like this, we answered some of the questions you all have about what makes this complex. If we didn't, I think a great community question would be, you know, what specifically would you like to know about Cross World or how we develop it? And we can try to answer that for you. Um, before we end, though, I do want to thank you guys for coming in. I know it's uh, weird to get on camera and do these <laughs> things, but we really appreciate it. And to everyone out there, if you like what you saw, let us know. Uh, with a follow or a subscription and we'll just keep doing these and we'll do more technical deep dives if you'd like otherwise thanks everyone and we'll see you again that was good that was good well 
I hope that was helpful. One thing that we did learn is why we can't get crossover OPR in less than one month. But I want to have a question for you de uh, developers and all commenters. I'd love to know if you guys think that if we can deliver and cross over o OPR sooner than later, and then layer the chat and all the communication needs so that way you are not causing all these shards to be having issues, can we get both? Or you give us a product earlier, and then later you can develop the other systems that we also care about. If it doesn't cause the double the amount of work that you need, then that's something that I would actually like to ask you developers. Can we get a non-communicative product or we can get crossover sooner and then bring all the chat features and all the other communication features that allows those shards to talk that makes it more complex like ELO's later. If that's the case, I would say I'm on it. Chat, what do you guys think? Do you want it as well? I am not sharding on stream, you sick <laughs> that's, that's That's my question I have for you. Uh, and at the same time, if you guys have any questions or comments that you guys want for the devs, feel free to basically post it on their Twitch, on their YouTube video, as well as mine. I'd love to hear your thoughts about what you guys watched with us. Have a good one, and I'll see you guys next time.